Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer Online action. As you can see, I've taken the uh, Dark Elves once again. We are going to be facing up against the Lizardmen, so you guys know what that means. It's Marathi time. So we've got Marathi, her spell loadout. Uh, it's going to be the Soul Blight for armor sundering and weapon damage, uh, you know, reduction. Power of Darkness for extra recharge rates, and Soul Stealer for self healing. For the rest of the build, we've got a frontline mix of Black Art Corsairs and Black Art of Nagrond. Of course, Black Art of Nagrond being an elite tier halberd, have armor piercing anti large, 110 armor, great combat stats, really good unit overall. We've also got Dread Spears on the flanks, two unit of Witch Elves in the second line here. As you can see, Vanguarded, Vanguarded up over here, we have two units of Dark Riders with Repeater Crossbows. These guys cost the same as the Dark Shards, and they're on horses, so it gives them some extra mobility. A very nice unit can see them taking some shots from these chameleon skinks over here. I've also got two units of cold one knights hidden here in the woods, and that's about it for my build. For my opponent, of course, he's got the chameleon skinks here, a unit of pterodon riders, front line of saurus warriors with shields, got a skink cohort on each flank, one cold one spear rider in reserve here. He's got uh, Krokgar on Grimlock, Revification Crystal, Laser Lizard, and a Lore of Heavens skink priest up on a pterodon. Let's check out his loadout. Looks like he's got everything. Chain Lightning, Comet of Castadora, Uranus Thunderbolt, Curse of Midnight Wind, Wind Blast, and Harmonic Convergence. Wow, so he didn't cut any spells. Very interesting. Let's go ahead and kick things into full gear here. So I'm just going to be kind of pushing forward a little bit with my Cold One Riders. They're, they've got, you know, 90 armor, so I don't want them to take a ton of free fire, but uh, it's better than Marathi taking that fire. So we're going to push her over here, and, uh, you know, she's only got 40 armor and 15% missile resistance. So she will take a lot of damage from those Chameleon Skinks, so this is probably not the best plan. But uh, I was really just trying to get, go after those Pterodon Riders and push them off and keep them from really harassing, you know, my troops as they advance. We're going to be pushing up the mainline fight just across here since my opponent's got this Laser Lizard. It benefits me to try and push forward as quickly as possible. You can see one of those units of Dark Riders got away fairly unscathed. The other one took about... 40% HP damage, which is pretty rough. You can see the Laser Lizard now opening up on Rathi, but we're going to get these Cold One Knights into the Laser Lizard to interrupt it from firing. So they're going to be able to do some nice anti-large armor piercing damage. Granted, the entire Lizardman force is right here, so they're going to get overwhelmed pretty quickly here. But uh, mostly this is just to tie down this Bastilodon, keep it from firing, and do a little bit of armor piercing anti-large damage while we can. Now you can see these Cold One Spear Riders counter charging here, doing some really nice damage. I was also trying to charge in on these... Uh, skinks, but, uh, you know, just pulling away here, realizing this is a skink cohort, not a Saurus, I'm going to just immediately turn these guys around to fight. They'll be fine in that fight. You can see those uh, Cold One Knights getting tear routed off almost immediately, but then, here, look at this. So my opponent continues to charge through with his Cold One Spear Riders, <coughs> charges straight through these Blackhawk Corsairs, and straight into these Witch Elves. So this is the reason why I keep these Witch Elves in a second line here. So then I can respond to wherever, push them into the fight, and lock down these units with that taunt ability. So these Cold One Spear Riders are going to go into Enrage as soon as these guys start getting attack animations. And they're going to be locked down in here with these Black Guard of Nagarond, who are going to be doing a ton of anti-large armor piercing damage. Just really cutting these guys down. So it's a really bad situation for them. You can see now the Enrage is going off. And uh, we're just going to be continuing to push around these Black Art Corsairs into the flank here. We're going to push this Black Art of Nagarond and this Witch Elf onto the Laser Lizard and just push this, uh, this Black Art Corsair over here and just continue to pressure this flank. Dread Spear should be fine fighting up against Skinks. Uh, so let's go ahead and kick things back into full gear. You can see Saurus trying to come in here to support, dropping a few bombs, getting actually some decent friendly fire there also. Uh, did some nice work on the Black Guard, but... All these units are going to get locked down by the Enrage, and it's going to be a really hard time. You can see this Bastildon now getting caught out by the by the Witch Elves and by the Black Guard. So as soon as that Enrage, yep, you see that pops off. He's going to lose control there, and it's going to be just stuck in here with these Black Guard, which is a really bad situation. Meanwhile, we're just navigating uh, the Dark Riders with the crossbows around, trying to get some shots on the Revification Crystal and on Krokgar himself. Looks like Krokgar is going to wisely try and pull away there. Over on this flank, these skinks are just uh, kind of bogging down my Dark Riders, but it's no big deal. We brought the Dread Spears around. going to be sacrificing them for a little bit of more magic here. So, uh, I, I see this Chameleon Skink uh, is here on my flank, so we're going to just charge into it right away. Granted, this isn't great. The Chameleon Skinks do have uh, decent combat stats, but we should be able to do a bit of damage on the charge and at least interrupt them from firing. Now you can see, though, 
uh, Krokgar came in and actually dived into these Witch Elves. So this is a huge mistake by my opponent, in my opinion. Uh, dropping in with these Witch Elves and these Black Guard means that Krokgar is going to get enraged and locked down in this fight. Also dropping a Soul Stealer on him for Marathi uh, as she just uh, gets a little bit of health back. She's currently chasing down these Pterodon Riders, not allowing them to fire into the rear of my troops. But yeah, you can see now Rock Krokgar getting the enrage from the Witch Elves. Locked in with these Black Guard of Nagron. He's taking a ton of damage and really in a bad situation. This is not where he wants to be. You can see the Bastilladon with the, uh, so the Solar Engine is almost down as well. The uh, <clears throat> Murderous Prowess now kicking off, so all these troops are going to get a huge spike in damage and uh, leadership and everything. You can see the Cold One Knights getting routed off by the Terror, unfortunately, but Karakar is down to about 50% HP. This unit of Skink Cohort out on this flank is pretty much done at this point, and the, uh, the Dark Riders are just being allowed to fire continuously from the rear. Uh, we're just going to use their superior mobility to pull away from the Chameleon Skinks and to not take that free fire. You can see, though, Krokgar getting very, very low from all that Black Guard and everything. Uh, he's uh, about 20% HP now, still enraged, and with the Murderous Prowess and everything going off, these guys are going to be absolutely massacring him. You can see him taking quite a bit of damage there. Really bad situation for him. The uh, the Dark Riders as well, just firing in their crossbow bolts, getting some nice done on work done on this Revification Crystal. Uh, looks like they've been able to pick up a chevron, at least in one case. Uh, so very interesting. Getting some really nice work done. Now that uh, Marathi got a hold of this skink priest with the Lore of Heavens, of course she has anti-large armor piercing weapon strength. And with the murderous prowess, she does have 69 melee attacks. So of course she just massacred that skink priest. Krokgar's routing off, so we're going to bring in Marathi to chase. Of course her anti-large armor piercing. As long as she stays on Krokgar, he won't come back from routing. She'll be perfectly fine. Uh, these Pterodon Riders haven't been able to do a whole lot here. This is probably the one pick that I disagree with for my opponent's army. Other than that, I think he brought a good army overall, but uh, these Saurus just continuing to hold out in the main line here against these Black Guard. They're really not having a good time, though. Going to get rear charged by Dread Spears, and uh, it's pretty much going to be all she wrote for them. In the back, it's heavily compromised. We've got uh, Cold One Riders just chasing down these Chameleon Skinks along with the Dread Spears. A lot of units are shattered, though, at this point, uh, and with Krokgar shattering. That's pretty much going to be all she wrote for the Lizardmen forces. So, hope you guys enjoyed watching that battle. Just a quick example of why Witch Elves are so good and how they can be used against the Lizardmen. Uh, my opponent diving in with those uh, various dinosaurs and me being able to lock them down with the Witch Elves on top of the uh, you know Black Art of Nagaron, sort of using them in conjunction. It's very, very powerful and you can really lock down high value targets and just drag them into the mud this way. So really, a strategy I very much like using. I wasn't huge on the Black Guard at first, but uh, you know, using them in combination with the Witch Elves is definitely powerful. Uh, the Dark Riders. This one got an XP chevron um, from shooting at the the. Uh, they, one started out with two, one started out with one from shooting at the uh, Solar Engine. These guys are really nice in this matchup because the Lizardmen don't have anything that can catch them. <clears throat> Excuse me. But they're, uh, you know, they do decent armor-piercing damage, good mobility. I mean, they can only fire in the front arc, but basically the horses are just there to reposition them quickly, you know, uh, and then use them almost like traditional crossbows. But uh, the Cold One Knights as well, doing some nice work on that uh, solar engine at first and the skinks. And, uh, yeah, just across the main line we were able to win pretty decisively. Marathi taking out that uh, skink priest was really nice as well. And her magic, of course, she's continuously dropping. I didn't get the chance to show you guys, but uh, she's continuously dropping that soul blight in the front line. Tearing away the armor of the Saurus and lowering their weapon strength, which is, uh, you know, a very important because... Saurus have high weapon strength, they have okay armor, and against, especially if they're fighting like Black Art Corsairs, if you can tear, uh, you know, 30 of that armor away, they are down to only 30 armor. I mean, they have 60 base, which is okay, it's not a ton, but it's decent. But if you can tear away half of that with Soul Blight, um, you know, they'll suffer quite a bit more to the Black Art Corsairs. As well, you know, they have high weapon damage, so the minus 25% weapon damage from the Soul Blight is also very pertinent in that matchup. So, hope you guys enjoyed watching that. I sure enjoyed playing it. If you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. I'm keeping it coming with more every single day, so stay tuned for more, and we'll see you next time.